Well, um, what we're going to share now is our view on Scotland. Um, we honestly only what I would class as sort of like scrape the edges of Scotland. We have not explored the full extent of Scotland by any long chalk. No, mostly what we did was the Inner Hebrides. Yeah. And uh, the lower Inner Hebrides, not the uh, upper ones. At, at that. So, um, so this view does not cover the whole of Scotland. It just gives you a little bit of an insight on what we found in Scotland and um, where we went in Scotland. Um, but you've got all the videos as to where we are, but this is just sort of like uh, an overall, overall view of what we did in Scotland. So um, we started well. We apologise for the noise. We're doing this video today because it's blown an absolute gale outside. The boat is rocking and rolling, so all the creaking, the bangs, the thumps, the halyard slapping. It's all part of boating, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so we started um, in Port Ellen. Yes. Um, and um, for us, uh, Port Ellen got um, the Best Variety Award. Um, because what I'm looking for, I've decided, is I'm looking for a walk. You know, somewhere where I can get a decent walk. I want a couple of points of interest uh, that's close by so that there's something to actually go and do. And then on top of that, I want shops and to be able to buy things. Um, so those are the kind of things I'm looking for. And of course, we managed to get a um, free bottle of um, sample of Lefroy because we had become friends of Lefroy. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Ben! <laughs> I'm going to have a little sip too. Wow. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it is. Well, anyway, not much. We left. could actually finish the Lefroy bounty on camera. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so um, good points of interest, um, and um, but not the greatest place to have a blow in. Definitely not. <laughs> it makes up for that in other ways. <laughs> okay, so you do gear Cheers then. <laughs> oh. Farewell, Port Ellen. You have a oh. wonderful distillery. You do. Right, so from Port Ellen we went to gear. Or Giga, um, depending how you pronounce it, depends who you talk to. And one thing about Giga was mooring balls were not a problem. They had so many mooring balls they could probably give them away. Um, the choice between the mooring ball and the pontoon was about a fiver a night. Um, we did the mooring ball because we wanted to get salty sausage off because that was our challenge. Because um, I like Thank challenging. God, myself. you said that. I was. Gonna th I thought we were going to have to say because we were too mean to spend the extra fiver. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Yes, we did the mooring ball because we wanted to get salty sausage off because that was our challenge. Definitely. And, you know, we didn't begrudge the, the extra fiver that we saved by doing that. That was just a little bonus on it. We went and spent it in the Gia restaurant, which was very, very nice. We enjoyed it. Uh, we did. Um, but Gia is somewhere that I would have liked to spend a little bit more time with because uh, I'd got it all planned in my head that we were going to um, hire a um, uh, bicycle there but it was throwing it down the Yeah, next really day. what we needed to hire in Gia was oil skins. <laughs> it's just unfortunate with the weather. It was, so um, Gia was somewhere that I would have liked to have spent a bit more time. I agree. Um, but anyway, we only just stayed there the night um, and just did a little walk. Um, so, And then we got an invite from a f um, one of our subscribers, um, Bob Mullins, to go and see him up at Tavelik. And we'd never heard of the place. Mm. Um, I would say about Tavelik, an incredibly picturesque little place. Uh, they've only got three mooring balls. Uh, but they've now got a pontoon that you can... Um, five extra spaces on it, I believe. Yeah, so it's got actually five extra spaces. But just uh, around the corner um, from Tavelik, because um, um, one of um, the yachty people from Liverpool was there, 
uh, there was a, a good anchorage. There's apparently a very good anchorage just to the north of Severick. We didn't see it, but um, the chap we know, Clive, uses it for quite frequently and he says it's a really, really good anchorage. Uh, so that's just north of Tabalik. Um, such a picturesque uh, little place, um, but not very much in the way of shops and the mobile signal is <laughs> zero. So... <laughs> If, yeah. if if you want to get away from everything, that is a great place to go. It's not a bad go. option. Yeah, it's not it's a bad not option. It's not a great place. It's a great place. After that, we went to Ardfern. Um, because we really needed to get um, a pilot notes because we wanted to do anchorages. And that's something that you really need is is some pilot notes. Yeah, but Ardfern, lots of mooring balls outside the harbour. And I would say that if you arrive in office hours, you won't have a problem. If you arrive outside office hours, you're probably better taking the mooring ball for the night and waiting till the office opens in the morning because getting into the pontoons can be tricky to know exactly where a visitor goes because we couldn't find any markings saying visitor pontoon. So in the end, we just went to the mooring ball. Mm. It was easier to go there and deal with it in the morning. Mm. Um, good chandlers uh, to Ardfern. So if you're looking for nuts and bolts and quite a few other little just tiny little things And when the like office that. staff were in 9 to 5, they were extremely helpful. No quibbles there whatsoever. Mm. Moving on. Um, yeah, from Ardfern we went to, to Oban. Oban. Now, there's two marinas in Oban. One on the western side, which is Oban Marina, and one on the town side, which is Oban Transit Marina. And on the transit one, you can stay for three days. On the other marina, you can stay for much longer. Um, we initially went to Oban Marina, the western one on the island of Carrera. And very, very friendly... Uh, uh, marina very friendly staff nice little pub but sadly we're having to give them the wooden spoon i know, I know it's plastic we're just gonna have to work with yeah us work with us on this i know it's a plastic spoon but we we'll have to give them the wooden spoon for the shower facilities because it's not the fact that you have to pay a pound to get the shower it's the fact that to put the money in the slot it's on the outside of the shower room and you're on the inside of the shower room and if it runs out halfway through your shower you have to walk stark naked into a public area to put another bind in. Um, just move it inside the door, guys. It'd be a big improvement. Um, oh, and I'll just point out, in another marina further up that we'll come to in a bit, they had exactly the same payment system inside the cubicle. Yeah. Um, so at Oban, there's good walks. Good points of interest. They run a water taxi to the time. Wa run a water taxi, so that's quite interesting, um, you know, to make it uh, a little bit more interest. They had the only deal we heard about, which was uh, if you were there for seven nights, you, you only paid for six. six. That was the only deal that we heard about. Um, but we didn't say though. At Slightly all. on the downside, if there's if there's wind from the wrong direction, there's swell coming through from the ferries and things like that. You do get bounced around a bit if you're on the outside of the pontoons. Um, yeah. So because of that, we head around the corner to Dunstaffnage. Yeah. Which was for the wind direction in question, which was the southerly. Dunstaffnage was much more sheltered. Um, but it's very isolated. It's very, very quiet. It's got a good restaurant and a fairly decent chandler's, but it is a very quiet spot. I mean, forget towns and things, it's just the marina, that's all you get. Um, so, points of interest, not an awful not lot. Not an awful lot. Um, yeah. Uh, for anybody who's a Monty Python fan, I was gutted to find out about three weeks later that if I'd come out of Dunstaff and just turned right and gone about five miles, I'd have found Castle Arg, which is quite famous in the Monty Python and the Holy Grail movie. And I would love to have found it, but I didn't. I turned the other way and we went to Loch Ely. Uh, yeah, so Loch Aileen was somewhere that we did not see in its best. Um, no, because it was a Highland Gale and driving rain. And um, we didn't even get off um, because Salty Because it was last. a Highland Gale and driving rain. Yeah, because it was... Uh, however, if we had have got off, uh, apparently there are some good fossils uh, to go and look for. However... We, did not we didn't see any of them. Didn't so didn't see anything particularly after, much. After two days bouncing like a cork on a mooring in Loch Eileen, and there's plenty of mooring, so no complaints there, we went to Tobermory, and Tobermory is mooring ball land. They are everywhere, and there's plenty of room in the pontoons as well. There was, um, and um, again, 
that also had lots of interest so you've got a good town uh, you've got lots of shops a uh, good variety of shops um, you've got a distillery inside the, in the town itself um, so if you obviously like your whiskey that's something to be looking out for uh, got quite a few nice walks around the place um, so you know uh, it's the kind of thing that Bev and I are looking for is sort of like we want to be able to do something we like to be able to take our boat and this is something we've learned about ourselves it's nice to be a quiet spot but it's nice to have something to do as well yeah exactly so I'd say that Tobermory is something that somewhere that you should uh, think about going yourself um, very quaint and everything indeed um, round the just across the bay from there is the anchorage that we uh, finally uh, put the anchor down in, uh, which was um, Long Lock Drambury. And although absolutely fantastic, quiet anchorage, there's nothing to do. Basically, you're in a you're in a you're in an enclosed lock with fairly high walls around it of limestone and things like that. There's no mobile signals, there's no VHF signals, there's no houses, there's no electric, there's no people, there's nothing actually. Just you and 50 billion ferns. So um, from there we went back to Oban, but this time we went to the Transit Marina. Uh, the Transit Marina got our um uh, second prize for the uh, toilet facilities. Great shower facilities. Because it had good shower facilities. And of course you've got the town on your on, doorstep. On your doorstep. So if you do want to have a bit of nightlife, you're not having to sort of like schedule everything with the... And although uh, you're really, taxi. really close to the car ferries and you expect to get bounced around a lot, they have put concrete pontoons in and they really stop the swell. So. The car ferries are running around 100 yards away and there's no swell. You're not bouncing around like a cork. That's on if you're on the inside Side of, the, of breakwater. the breakwater because you can, if you're a bigger boat, like for instance... But to be fair, most of the, most of the mirrorings and things are, are on the inside of the breakwater in the pontoons. Yeah, but they put the bigger boats, like for instance... Um, the Lord Nelson. The Lord Nelson, which, uh, let's be honest... It's is about 100 feet long. So <laughs> it's 100 feet long, so it's a huge boat. Yeah. Uh, that was on the outside, so... Uh, but on the inside inside because we were on the inside uh, there was no swell from those or anything from the um, ferries. The steady is a rock. Uh, but you can only stay there um, three nights. Three nights. After, in... after that we went to Crinan. Uh, yeah we did the anchorage, we did another anchorage uh, which was just it was, just a, it was a nice anchorage but we relearned the lesson that if you can't get off on the dinghy there's not much point in being in the anchorage. That's true. Um, but then we went to Crinan. Then we went to Crinan. Yeah. And we decided to do the Crinning Canal, and that cost us 100 and... 130 quid, which in most Scotland marinas, or which were, we were doing about £33 pound a night, um, four thirty threes is 132 So we decided we may as well get our money's worth out of the Crinning and do it over four nights. Uh, so our first night was actually at um, Crinning okay. Marina. Uh, Crinning sort of basin, isn't it? Our second night was at the top. The second night was at the top. And our third and fourth nights were in, I think it's a Drishig. Yes, which is at the bottom. Which is at the bottom. Um, so on the Crinning Canal. It's expensive, <sighs> but if you want to avoid bad weather going around the Mulligan Tower, it's an option. It's an option. Um, Beverly won't be doing canals again, but that's only because she doesn't like... I'm not a canal person. No, but you also didn't like the uh, narrow confines. I didn't the... like the fact that things like pontoons were like an inch longer than the boat. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and the canals were about an inch wider than the boat and things. I mean, they really cut it to the bone in canals. They do. But anyway, so um, we did the canal. Yeah. Um, from there, we're going to just turn the page and we went into the Clyde no um, we were in up we were in lower luck fine by then and uh, true. the weather took a bit of a turn and we decided to nip into Tarbert and have a shelter yes and Lock Tarbert is our winner for the shower block awards he did floors in the shower block it was oh. lovely, oh, it was lovely. <laughs> really nice shower blocks admittedly it is brand new so, um, it don't run it down. No, I know, but it was really, really nice shower blocks. Nice little uh, harbour, very quaint. Plenty, um, plenty of nice shops. Plenty of nice shops. 
Um, could I didn't fa didn't go much further than the town. Yeah. But I'm sure if you were there for a bit longer, uh, you could have found some nice points of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly um, a nice little harbour. Um, and um, it was a great little place out of the blue, wasn't it, Beth? Yeah. And from uh, there we skedaddled over to Largs. But to be honest, we were in and out of Largs so quick, it hardly seems fair to judge the place. Um, yeah, but Satin Sales did a great job on... Uh, That's true, Satin Sales did a great job. Did, did, and we got some bargains in the Chandlers. That is, yes, because uh, we got the dry matting from there. And, and we, we got some pilot books in there, which, which were reduced down. Yep, yeah, so getting uh, second-hand or, or sort of older pilot books... Always a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so we went to uh, Largs. And then from there, we went to Millport. Which wins the Most Surprising Find Award. Purely because we'd never heard of the place before in our lives. I mean, if we'd never heard of Tarbert, it would probably be a, a, a contender. But Millport, we didn't know it existed until somebody said, why did you go to Millport? And so we did. Um, also, but the moorings were fantastic. Great and, moorings, yeah. And um, the other thing about those particular moorings is they were only like ten pounds um, a night mm -hmm. um, for the visitor moorings. Um, and there were a couple, but I didn't know where they were, which were apparently free. But I didn't see those particular ones. But the ones that got the word visitor on are ten pounds a night. So we had a great time, Millport, and then after that we skedaddled over to Troon. Um, now, Troon is one of the places you can get a deal, but only if you have got a... Only if you are moored up in your permanent marina and it's a Trans-Europe marina. So if you ha have got a Trans-Europe uh, card... Then you can get a discount there. You can get a discount, which is five nights at half price. price. But once again, Troon is one of those that it's a little hard for us to judge it because we have a bit of a soft spot for Troon because we bought a salty vest in Troon. Yeah, but the shop's not too far. Oh, the, they've got a, a decent supermarket with an easy walking distance. And um, the marina building and the showers in there are very, very nice as well. That is true. Um, so from um, Troon, we went across... To Lamlash. To Lamlash. Um, as... Oh... All, I just want to say in the Firth of Clyde we had some great sailing mm. because um, the the um, wind isn't quite as tunnelled as what we... It's very big and wide so the wind isn't funnelled at you. Um, so we actually had some great sailing. Um, we Okay, it wasn't a short sail down to Tarbot but that was okay until it got really a bit windy. Then we had a fantastic sail over to Saturn Sails and we had a good sail from Millport as well. Yeah, and we had a fairly decent sail from Troon till about 10 miles out or 5 miles out from Lamlash. Then we had to put the engine on at that point. Yeah, but we got quite a lot of... We got uh, quite a lot of the way and then the wind just died and we were stuck in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but we got a good good sail. So anyway, we went over to Lamlash. Uh, again, moorings at £10, which is... And again, somewhere we did not see at its best because the weather was absolutely foul. It was. Um, so I'm afraid Lamb Lash was just a big grey patch. Uh, so unfortunate, yeah. But anyway, we were there and, um, like I say, somewhere that I think, um, with better weather, I think it would be brilliant. Uh, but we just did not see it at its best. But certainly um, well protected and... Also, I'd like to find out a little bit more about the marine conservation area because that's something that's um, close to our hearts, isn't it? Um, and then from uh, Lamlash, we skedaddled over to Campbelltown. Campbelltown because we had noticed the weather forecast that there was a weather window coming up which would be very, very good for crossing the North Channel to Ireland. And having been in the North Channel a few times in the last few months, we've decided that we'd like to be in the North Channel, but we have the nicest weather possible. Because we've been in the North Channel in mediocre weather, and to be quite frank, you don't really want to be there. So um, we legged it over to Candle Town in double quick time in horrible grey weather, and that was the one time in our Scottish odyssey that we completely lost sight of land, even though it was only five miles away. The mist was so heavy, we couldn't see a thing. So that was totally instrument sailing because we couldn't see where we were going. Yeah. Uh, we, we got into Campbell Town. Yeah, we got a mooring because uh, everybody was rafted up on the... Um, it's not a very big marina and people start rafting up quite quickly when it gets overloaded. So we just took a mooring ball and then we went in the next day to pick up some diesel. Hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, and then that was it. So that was the end of our Scottish Odyssey, and yeah. after that, was back over to Northern Ireland. Mm. So, um, so overall, um, where we did the best sailing was in the Firth of Clyde, wasn't Firth it? Firth of Clyde and Loch Fine. Um, and also when we did, um, was it Loch Fine? Yeah, Loch Fine. That was the best sailing. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, we did an awful lot more motoring than I'd like, and I think that's to do with the topography in the fact that things are just funneling. And yeah, we can tack, but when you're tacking all the time, it's we just... tried tacking a lock rig, and we nearly round the side. Yeah, so because um, it's so narrow that by the time you got the boat settled on the tack, you virtually ran out of depth. So, mm. so, um, so a bit more motoring than we'd like. Um, as you can see, because we only went up just sort of like to Tobermory, we haven't explored very much of Scotland. So this is only, um, it's somewhere that we'll go again, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I think what we'll do next time when we go again is we'll be better equipped to anchor and um, more knowledgeable on anchoring. Mm -hmm.